Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on the We Thrive podcast, where we share stories from entrepreneurs from around the world about how they're creating an impactful legacy. I'm your host, Casey Clark, the Chief Growth Officer of C3 and the host of your podcast. Today, I'll be interviewing the pitch queen, Miss Precious Williams, who's also the CEO of Perfect Pitches by Precious. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about you. Oh, well, my name is Precious L. Williams, hashtag killer pitch master, a.k.a. the pitch queen. And I am the woman that will take your pitches from trash to what straight cash. As a 13-time national elevator pitch champion, it is my pleasure to show others and to train others how to package, position, and pitch themselves into greatness. When I started my pitching journey, I literally left being an attorney behind to start a lingerie company for full-figure divas and plus-size fashionistas. No one believed in it. No one thought that I should leave a stable career as an attorney behind. And so no one wanted to invest. And I said, nah, that's not going to work for me. So I went to an event I could not afford. And I pitched my business to the producers of MSNBC. And that first pitch got me on Your Business with J.J. Ramberg 11 years ago, where when I was on the show at Rockefeller Center, I walked away with $500,000. And then I was told enter pitch competitions. And out of 14 competitions, I won 13 times, bidding at Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Columbia, cool tech companies, Ivy League grads, international companies, because I'm the best in the world at what I do. And then uh, I went on to start Perfect Pitches by Precious to teach women, especially of a certain age, that not only are you not tied and through, you just began. And so I'm going to take what you see, what you don't see in yourself and show you that that's what people really like about you. And that's what they really resonate with you. And so while you're thinking, oh, I need to look, sign and act a certain way, baby, I did this at 327 pounds on television before Lizzo, before Ashley Graham and a couple of Sports Illustrated. There was Precious Williams going hard on Shark Tank and then showing my other seven clients who successfully appeared on Shark Tank how to win, how to get those investments. And then... I realized that I'm gifted in all six forms of pitching, elevator, media, investor, sales, speaker, and interview pitches. And so I've spoken and trained, at, uh, you know, spoken to students at Harvard University, Columbia University, Spelman College, Morehouse, HBCUs, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, community colleges. And then I have four number one bestselling books on pitching. And so that's a little bit about me. I came from the hood of St. Louis. I turned my perceived flaws into my secret weapon and they never saw me coming. And that's why I'm here today. I love that. And I heard you speak, it's been almost two years ago at a Howard County Chamber event and got goosebumps that day. Still got goosebumps. Wait, that was last year. I I know the years seem to go by. Oh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. And also women... Women and men really resonate because they're like, you know what? You can be you and be on those stages. Mm-hmm. When I grew up as a black woman told I had to have straight hair, not speak up, not do these things. And that just wasn't working for me. When I got my second chance at life, I was coming out swinging. Yeah. And it just so happens that this world needs people who shake tables and will not do the average what everybody else does. Yes, Absolutely. Well, when I heard your story, I was like, yeah, I've got to talk to her. <laughs> so here and we are. Like, after beating and titillating, you're like, oh, well, we got to oh, we got to see what's going on. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I, I set out that day and I was like, yep, this is happening. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Queen. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm really, really intrigued just by all you have to say. And I am excited to learn what exactly does thriving mean to you? Thriving to me really means that despite all obstacles, challenges, problems, frustrations, you keep moving forward. Incremental progress, small progress is still progress. And as a woman, many of us as women, listen, I've never been a mother. I've never been, um, I I don't have any children. I've never been a wife. And that's not a problem. It means I went my own way. And to think that pitching would be my niche. And that's the reason why people know me today when people say no one's going to listen to a fat, black, non-Ivy League trained woman and nobody cares about pitching. Who was right? (laughs) Sometimes as a visionary, you're going to get the bumps and the bruises. Mm -hmm. And people are going to tell you what's impossible 
But thriving means despite all that is being said, despite what the world says, I have value and I have worth. And if I got to teach all y'all to treat me a certain way, I will. And if I got to get the bumps and the bruises, me and my queens who've been kicked to the curb because of age, race, sex, sex class, uh, sexual orientation, differently able, disabled, whatever, all those perceived flaws, we're going to turn the world on this head. Because perfection doesn't exist the way people think it does. And I don't have to be on yachts to be thriving. Baby, I'm in the space that you, I'm like Visa, I'm everywhere you want to be. That's thriving. I love that. I love it. So you mentioned obstacles. So talk to me about some of the obstacles that you have faced on your way to thriving. <laughs> the first <laughs> obstacle was I didn't believe in myself. So even though my grandmother told me I had to get to speech when I was a teenager, when the principal of my high school asked me to speak at an event, I didn't know I was speaking before the, the mayor of the city of St. Louis. I didn't know I would speak before two governors of Missouri mm -hmm. and that not be a stressful thing because I had a gift and I didn't know it. As I've gotten older, yes, I'm the first in my family to go to college. And I was told that, that no school would ever give me a full scholarship and they were wrong. <laughs> People were wrong. But I didn't realize even then the killer pitch master was it was was there, you know, and I could write applications and I could type up applications on typewriters and get those full scholarships. Uh, my second challenge was growing up being unwanted by my own parents and feeling like the black sheep of the family because I wanted out of St. Louis, Missouri. I wanted to see the world like I used to watch A and E, the Arts and Entertainment Channel. So while everybody was watching. Uh, Cartoons, no, I wanted to see what is the world like? And I'm going to go, I read books. I want to go and see these places. So not believing in myself, you know, coming from a disadvantaged background, going off to college, having a little bit of fear and trepidation, but my confidence is what won people over. Another challenge that I had was that I dated at the level of my esteem. And you'll hear people say, you know, sometimes the people you're that are attracted to you are seeing something in you. And I dated the wrong people who, who didn't nurture. They understood that I was broken and they would take advantage of their brokenness. Another challenge that I had was that when I lost the love of my life, I don't think I, I understood grief to that level. I've lost my grandparents and I'm still grieving them. But to lose the man who inspired you to start your first company at 327 pounds, who was the reason why I started Perfect Pitches by Precious. My whole world changed and became a severe alcoholic. And when I tell you I turned 44 this Sunday, that's six years that I've been clean and sober. What? Congratulations. <laughs> thriving. Um, you know, go, being homeless. Like I lost everything when I lost him. The will to live and everything. So those are some of the challenges. Other challenges is not speaking up when I should have. <laughs> yes. I Which mean, surprises me. <laughs> right, right. But, but. The pressures you see today didn't really come into fruition to, to really late 30s into my 40s. Mm -hmm. All of this was all inside of me, but I was afraid that I didn't look, sound, and act like everybody. Like, think of all the speakers you've probably heard. They have a cadence, da, 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 da. I don't sound like them. I walk on stage, it's like, we going ham on it. We going <laughs> ham on it. And, jelly on it. And, and see, speakers be like, well, you know, Precious, you have a lot of fire and energy. You might want to, I'm not doing none of that. Right. When I am hired, there's a specific reason. And when you see me on stage, it's just know someone had to see, we need that. When, when you saw me, it was about changing the game. We got to, we got to flip the script and rewrite the rules of the game, you know? And so taking a topic and being able to meld it into something I can do. So those are my challenges, you know, just so fear, worry, doubt, the expectations of others when realizing that I had to come into my own. I think the 40s are so wonderful. Yeah. I'm not saying everything is as perky as it was in the 20s. I ain't gonna lie like that. 
But baby, when you see me, all you see is this confidence because it's experience. So you can't talk to me about some stuff I'm like, brother, I didn't, I, we didn't hit that in the 20s and 30s. We, we good. I don't even, I'm not even going to enter that conversation. Number two, you yeah, can't make sense of crazy. So don't even try. <laughs> That's a great thing about thriving. When somebody is coming at you crazy, I'm not even going to make sense. And I'm going to disengage and exit stage left. Come on now. Yeah, absolutely. What are you arguing with? I'm telling you. Or you should do it like this. Um, are you in the trenches? Are you an entrepreneur? Are you a speaker? Are you a trainer? Then I can't. I literally can't listen to you because if you're not fighting in the trenches with me, if you actually don't understand what to own a business is like, if you don't understand how working in corporate America and being an entrepreneur or having great ideas, you know, if you're not in those trenches, then you just talking a whole lot of noise. I'm not trying to hear. Yeah. From inexperience. <laughs> yes. I mean, your point should be like this. <laughs> so that's what we own. No, ma'am. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I'm not far from 40 and I'm there. <laughs> you used like this. It's like like I used to laugh at my grandma. My grandmother could tell me who my grandparents could tell who were good people and who weren't. Like even, okay. and we call it and say being real, right? Now I understand. Because you could meet people, yeah, the energy's not gonna work for me. I don't care what they I don't care if they paint. I no, I will not take you as a client. I don't even want to fool with you because I already know where this is going. Yes. I prefer to say no. I live in New York City. Rent is so darn high. But I'd rather tussle with a landlord if I have to than to deal with <laughs> someone who's going to make me have gray hair, snatch my edges. I come on here. you like precious. I don't even know who you is. I know. I know. I know. That's so true. Though. It's not worth it. And when you get to that point, like it's such a great space to be in. You know, I, I don't know about you, but when I first started my business, you take everything. You're like, I don't okay, care. Okay. Is the lights on? Thank you. Is the rent paid? Thank you. Yeah. Talk about it, Queen. You, 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 listen, they don't know this part of the story. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a journey. <laughs> we'll, we'll just say that. It, it is totally a journey. But thriving, yeah. I think a lot of our thriving comes from actually learning the lessons. Not just going through it. And putting it behind, but sometimes there are some lessons that will consistently come up until you fully deal with it, right? Yes. And that happens in business too, right? You may be sucking into, oh, this person has a big name. They might, but it doesn't mean they're a great person. Very true. Or I got to flex like I'm on yachts and I'm on all these trips. Maybe your target audience isn't impressed with that because they've already done that. So you may be flexing to a different audience that could never be your client anyway. So be very clear on what is your client's need? What are your prospects? What eventually turn into clients need to see you doing? And because I actually am still a speaker, international professional speaker, I'm still a best-selling author. I still create pitches for sales team, sales pitching, sales scripting. I, you know, work on mindset. So, I'm still in the trenches showing I'm not removed. Yeah. Like I'm reading this in a textbook, like boost to the ground. You've had the pandemic, the economic downturn, social unrest, monkey pox, inflation, recession. And like all of this stuff has all been happening back to back. And it is such a stressful time. And I just also want to say that I've never met a perfect business in my life. I've never. Indeed. I mean, a lot of people won't talk about what those struggles are. I'm not afraid to talk about it because I'd rather you know. So if you see someone who seems like an overnight success, unless they're 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, maybe even 20 something. Most people, it took them 10, 15 years for you to really hear them. So what yes. seems like overnight success to you was a lot of scratching and surviving. Good <laughs> It was taking on the bad clients that make you a better coach or trainer. It was being in situations where you realize, you know, this is the last time I'm going to engage in this. The last time I'm getting into this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, look at this picture, right? How many speakers and author, like they are so bold with color? None. I got <laughs> I'm black. I can't. I'm not showing up in black. Unless I want to. Yeah. But if you want to slay all competition, 
I'm coming to do, I'm coming to do damage. And I want you to, you know, know that you do have competition, but it doesn't mean you have to be the biggest name to have the biggest impact. Right. True. Yes. That's one thing that I admired when I listened to you is you showed up like you weren't just there to talk. Well, and dial in again. <laughs> you, yeah, you definitely showed up. So it was, it was awesome. I'm very, very glad that I got to experience that. Thank you, Queen. Thank you, Queen. I was, I was blonde hair today, but I said, you know, I'm just gonna let her do her thing. You know, I'm just gonna be. Like, oh, okay. Well, you got you. <laughs> <laughs> so when you've been overcoming these obstacles in your life, what are some of the biggest tools that have helped you? Some of the biggest tools that have helped me is number one, God, my higher power. In my darkest moments, you know, I, I didn't know my heavenly father and creator before I didn't. But when I was, you know, homeless on the streets of New York and I was in this program. I was in a Bowery Mission Women's Center. So we couldn't just watch TV. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't, listen, it was discipleship classes, volunteering, and really discovering who you are outside of work and all of this. Like who you are is more important than what you do. But we lived it. So you know how we all go to our phones. We didn't have that option. We could only watch pure flicks at certain times with the staff member there. So you can go to your room, but only at certain times. Yeah. So if you got to be, you know, uh, lights off at 10 and back up at six, man, I was up at four because, you know, I was getting it popping. Me and God was getting it popping. <laughs> so he spoke to me while I was there and he told me my second chapter is going to be better than my first. Now, a lot of people said that my best days were behind me. They think Shark Tank and all that was the best. And, and my Heavenly Father said, no. The best is yet to come because you're going to bounce back in a way that does that defies all logic. It wasn't because of who you knew. It wasn't because of um, your money because you were I broke when I walked. <laughs> I remember you talking about that specific time. Broke. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? But I'd already been equipped. As a killer pitch master, whatever I did the first time, we're going to do it to another degree. Uh, number two is I got really focused on relationships and developing real, like real authentic relationships. You know, before I was very transactional. You know, you buy something, I buy that kind of thing. But you know what? Oh, you know what I love now is I used to be a robot or a shell of who I am. I'm fully myself. So I will wake up every morning after I do my devotionals and stuff like that. I will, you know. My heavenly father will say, contact this person and I'll write, hey, queen, let's go. I see you. And they be <laughs> loving it. They be loving it because it's like you think you're alone. You get a text message and then sometimes that leads to a conversation. We'll be chopping it up. What that also leads to is opportunities that had you not reached out. And it's not like I'm reaching out saying, buy my stuff. Be very clear. I'm not. Or, you know, if I have something coming up and I just want people to show up and it's like something for free. Like last night, I did a um did something with Andrew Frazier, smart small business like a pro, and you know I sent it to my peeps. And I'm thinking, you know, and my, you know, man, it was lit. It was lit, and then people were going ham and cheese. So building relationships and caring. So if someone's mom died, if their business is struggling, if you know they're ready to pull their hair out and snatch somebody else's edges, reach out. You never know where people are in their journey. I felt alone, but I didn't reach out. Number three, I love it when people send me messages. So like, whether you purchase something from me, I'm going to holler at you. You're going to hear from me. But more importantly, I'm thankful and grateful and appreciative because there's so many entrepreneurs out there and yet you chose me. And that goes back to why I'm the killer pitch master, a.k.a. the pitch queen. It's because when you're the only choice that matters, it doesn't matter what your competition is doing. They're going to seek you out. They're going to buy your books and your programs and stuff like that because they, they feel like there's going to be a transformation that happens. Or they're going to see things from a totally different perspective. I was recently at uh, the, I, the, idea, the Idea Collective Retreat that was in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. And... 
some of the attendees were just like, well, we just thought you were going to come in and say some words and bounce. You have been here the entire time. I said, well, number one, this is this is a very cool conference. Number two, I don't just show up and leave. That's I mean, we're like Geneva. I live in New York. So I want to I want to experience. I want to create. This is a community. And I'm glad y'all embraced it and didn't hold me like, oh, that's the speaker. Like I'm in the trenches. So, you know, you're not dealing with someone who's playing with you. And I'm telling they were just like, oh, we could touch you. We could talk to you. I was like, <laughs> like this one amazing guy to call him the mortgage guy. So I'm sitting at this table. He says, he's like, can I sit next to you? Come on, let's do it. And then he looked and saw I was reserved. And he said, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be here. I said, I don't let nobody tell me where I, where I belong and I don't. Sorry. I was like, I would sit here. And then a few days later, he wrote about it on LinkedIn. He said, I literally sat next to a woman who didn't allow whether the table said reserved or not to tell her where she can sit. Now, if they tell her, tell her, tell her she has to go, she will, but she's always going to sit front and center because person need a power. And also I want to be seen so that people can touch me. And that was a valuable lesson to him. Cause he's thinking, Oh, it'll be about the rules. I said, well, I'm the creative outsider. And I'm not bound by the rules of different industries. And that's why I have a different perspective on what it takes to get in. And finally, I think going along with the creative, the creative outsider is oftentimes in different industries, we're in group think. So whatever one does, we all just kind of blindly follow. But a creative outsider is not bound by that. Like I can come from a legal background. I can come from a media background and still know like how to get in my first movie. Maybe I didn't know what an audition tape was supposed to look like. I had no idea. I didn't know I was supposed to do a monologue, man. Me and my homeboy, you know, we got his video camera. I was, we was all over the city. I was making this all like, I'm big time going hell on him, you know? And they said they had never seen anything like it. And they told them that my personality, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to blast on the screen. And that's exactly what happened. So I didn't know the rules. So I couldn't, I couldn't follow anything. I was just like, yo, I'm trying to get up in here. My first audition, I'm in, in a movie. That's awesome. You know, now I'm on Fox Business on a show called America's Real Deals, a pitch trainer and co-host. I don't know if y'all can tell, I'm black on both sides. No Brazilian butt lift, no six-pack abs. <laughs> I mean, and she knows I'm telling the truth. She was like, nah, no six-pack abs, no Brazilian butt lift. Mm -mm. No, when I met her, she had blonde hair. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> I do remember the blonde hair. <laughs> I think we were wearing pink that day, too. Yep. Yeah, well, I, well, I, I was out of control. Yeah, yeah, I was out of control. I love it. Like BMW out of control. Like it was like I've been in so many different things, and they're like, "Oh, we definitely got a, we got a, we got a real winner here." <laughs> okay. Yeah, that yeah, I appreciate that about you though. So, with all of your experiences that you've had, and the obstacles and the connections that you've made, talk to me about legacy. So, what does that word mean to you? My legacy means that not only have I inspired women of all ages, but especially of a certain age to go after what it is they really want, to be who they really want. If you're eccentric, go, go ham on them. If you classic, if you just like flamboyant, like do you, you know, you still be professional. You can have different colored hair. But there's something about your talent and skill sets that someone younger does not have yet. Embrace the experience. Hell, embrace the body doesn't look the same, but you know how to carry it now. I think yeah. I think you just wasted, truly wasted on the end. I look back, I'm like, man, I was cute and didn't even do it. Not today, you can't tell. Listen, I'm a whole, <laughs> snack, come fetch you. I'm a whole snack, come fetch you. Like, come, come, come on, man. Um, my legacy is not just to inspire, but to to ensure that women take action. Mm -hmm. There is no one who was just like, other than my grandmother who's been deceased 20, 20 plus years, who ever said that it was, oh, it was great to be me. And so I want women to look around and say, even if I got a little bit more weight on me, even if I got some wrinkles, I embrace that, trust me. Cause more, it, what's that, what's that, what's that aging? you're not on this earth. Yes. <laughs> and so start where you are with what you have. It is not about purchasing all these big time 
um, coaching program. Like, like, like sometimes if you don't have it, what do you have? Embrace creativity. I told you I went on a show with no more. I had nothing to my name. And here I am pitching because in this world, especially the tech world, a lot of them are, are pitching things that have never even happened and they're just getting all of this money. When I step in, I gotta have, uh, 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 and I said, you know what? I'm gonna have the, I'm gonna have a confidence of someone who looks nothing like me, who came from, like I'm going ham on it. And you know what? It worked. It does. I'm not, and you don't, don't allow the limitations of others, the fear, the worry and doubt of others to stop you from what has been placed on your heart by your creator. And yes, I have gray hairs. And yes, when, when I've been stressed, my hair has fallen out. But can I tell you, I got a nice head of hair. And I can wear wigs like no other. I love it. If I'm going to go on Google, you know I had my blue wig. They was love it. Come on now. Who walks in? Like, I, don't, I can't wear hoodies. I got to be professional. But it's still got to be a choice to it so that you know I'm the only choice that matters when it comes to training in all forms of pitching, communication skills, written, verbal. You know, I don't write books just to be writing books. Like I want my books to sell, but I also want it to transform. And so that's why the titles are the way they are. You know, who would ever write a book called Bad Bitches and Power Pitches? You. <laughs> Bad Bitches Playbook to Convert Conversation to Currency. Whose books are reviewed by Forbes magazine and I ain't paid for it? <laughs> who was just featured on cnbc and when i tell you quid different women were at different airports and they heard my voice and thought i was there and they looked up and here i'm on the screens on the screens at the airport one of my friends because i had posted i said someone just told me that they heard my voice and i'm not at the airport she took a picture she said yes you are oh, I wow. that. three other women sent me pictures i'm looking at you right now Wow. Later on that night, a queen was in a New York City cab. Guess who was talking to her from the, from the CNBC art, uh, video? Are you serious? Talk about impact and legacy. People were just like, how is that possible? Yeah. Well, a lot of things I didn't plan for. But the things that I did, look at where they took me. Mm -hmm. How do you start a lingerie company when everybody only cares about Victoria's Secret? Now, who's talking about Victoria's Secret? Playing the long game in business is how you thrive. And if some things have to be changed, that's cool too. Playing the long game in relationships really matters because you don't know who's going to have your back when these supposed people who are there when it when times is good ain't there when times is rough. Mm -hmm. And so my legacy, let's get on, let's get, let's get up and let's go. I'm not leaning in. I'm already there. I'm sitting at the table. Where you at? Because I've got to call you. Hey! Get out from the back. Come to the table. That's what I'm about. And I hope I inspire other women like, hey, take off whatever you, let's, let's go. Let's go. You got it within you. There are people who want what you need. They just have never heard it the way you can. And yes, there are a lot of things that people say. I don't think I say them like everybody else because I don't have to. I have my own lingo, my own verbiage, my own lexicon. Let's go. Yeah. You're you, and that's what makes you, I think, so powerful. Like, I mean, I literally, I was actually talking to someone. They're like, you know, what did what did you love about her? And I said, she commanded the room. Like, she did not give two <laughs> Fs what people thought about her. <laughs> like, <laughs> she was just there. She was like, this is who I am. You take it or leave it. So. I that, think most of them took it. <laughs> yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah, that's, like, you know, I mean, I didn't hear any, um, I heard no bad comments, but even if I did, I'm not for everybody, but I don't know anyone who is. And yeah, exactly. But the fact that you aren't wavering because you know that to me, is, there's a lot to be said with that because not a lot of people have gotten to that space. True. Yeah. True. True. Um, but I, you know, being a serial entrepreneur and seeing the good, the bad, and the ugly. As much as I wish I had embraced this earlier, the timing is always perfect for when it happens, right? 
You're right where you need to be. And who would think in your forties you about like I'm about I'm popping out, I'm popping, I'm popping, I'm popping, I'm popping. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. Because some mm -hmm. people think your best is your, your high school years or your 20s. Baby, oh, this is the best. What? No. Come on. <laughs> Baby, you ain't know me in my 20s. I don't think I knew myself. My 30s, man, I was trying to come out whatever I was. Now it's like, activate. Yes, 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 yes. I love it. So speaking of knowing yourself now, what would be a nugget that you would give someone else who's coming into themselves and to thriving? Oh, one of the things that I would uh, tell others who are coming into themselves is as you're doing that, ask trusted individuals around you how they see you. What do they know you for? These are the type of questions that will unlock things in you that you didn't know. For example, ew, I just thought I got booked to speak because, oh, she's going to talk about pitching. She's going to be popping. No, that's not why people hire me. I know it's a shock to you as it was to me. They said it's your energy. Your energy is unlike anyone's we've ever seen. And yes, they're great speakers, but you embody it. You turn up the energy. Of the room. People don't want to go nowhere. They are captivated. The phone, they either, they, they film me you. Or they just are, it, they're captivated by you. And you would think no one pays for that. The hell they don't. They do. Another thing is when you're asking, I mean, really sit and listen and write it down. Because that goes into 150 reasons why somebody should hire you, book you, refer you, and things like that. And if you can come up with the first 10 on your own, just in your own, whatever. But asking other people, you might see a theme going through. And that's how I learned that energy is the first thing that whenever they do surveys, people always say that about me first. Oh, she's a great speaker, all of that. But it's like her energy. Yeah. Everything right. Like if she's like, if you precious is in the morning, we up now. So when it ate, oh, no, we about ready to, we, we about ready to jam. Lunchtime. Oh, man. Should we stay into the end? We, we will be here. <laughs> and then. So you need to have 150 reasons why somebody should hire you, book you, refer you, but that only comes from asking other people. Number two, as you're putting your list together, ask yourself, do people even know what you really do? So as great of a killer pitch master as I am, AKA the pitch queen, people think that's all I do. They don't know that I'm a poet. They don't know that I'm a speech writer. They don't know that, like, I have some experience with, you know, body language, how you should approach the stage, the little things that you should do that no one thinks I know. I definitely do. And then being a world-class master communicator, even if you have presentations, how do you structure presentations for maximum impact? You know, some people think it's, oh, you're just looking people in the eye. Have you not looking people in the eye? If you told, look to the back of the room, that's cute, but I want you to feel me. So let me make sure you understand <laughs> what time it is. I'm looking over here. here, here. I ain't afraid to see y'all. And that'll help you because you do need clarity into yourself. Sometimes we're so in our heads. The best things we could be doing, we can't see them, but someone around us can so if you go be on surface with, with people, really ask those questions. Those 150 reasons are, are going to be the reasons why when someone may have a, an objection, you can counter it because you know how you're being seen in the world. And those will inform how you post on social media. Those will inform how you show up in different rooms. So I think that those are the, the best ways. You know, as you, you know, you're definitely creating your business or you're going to another level. You do need to know how you're being seen and what are people saying about you and what's missing and how to add that people are pitching you for profit revenue. I love it. So before we end today, tell us a little bit more about these books that you've written. <laughs> well, so I, I am, uh, so I, as a four-time number one best-selling author, I've written uh, four books. My fifth is coming out this year. Yes, five books in five years. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't sleep. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so hey, hey, listen, I know we're in an age where everyone's like, you should just rest. Listen, you have to understand the different types of people. 
So when I was down for two years, <laughs> I was definitely resting. I was definitely <laughs> doing my thug thizzle. But some of us thrive in different environments. And so there are people who need to rest. And don't worry, I do get rest. But I make use of my time and I don't play. So my first book was Bad Bitches and Power Pitches for Women Entrepreneurs and Speakers Only. My first book was all about teaching the, what are, what are the seven branding personas of pitching, right? So people just want you to get a template. I'm not giving you a template if you don't know who you are. Are you unstoppable? Are you ruled by power, numbers? Are you mysterious? Are you funny? Uh, like, are you creative? There are certain ways that you need to see yourself. My second book, Bad Bitches and Power Pitches, the workbook. Now that you understand which one or two you may fall into, it's time to create different types of pitches for the different audiences you may be in front of. This helps with your posting, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, pitching to your superiors about a new idea. There's so many ways. What, what you say in your elevator pitch when you're at events, whether you're in corporate America, nonprofit world foundation, or you have your own business. Third book, once you get your pitches together. You want to pitch for profit. The bad bitches playbook to convert conversations into currency. Yeah, that's me. Black on both sides. That's me. Blind, uh, white, blind. Yeah, you know we did. <laughs> this book is all about building and rebuilding your network. A lot of times we hang around people who are at the level we're at, and there's no growth. So there are other people you need to be in front of. There are other people you need to be around, right? So that you know you can take advantage of other opportunities. And if an opportunity comes across someone. And this goes back to something I just said. If people know what you really do and what else you're capable of, when opportunities come across an email, they know to to nominate you, put you on. Mm -hmm. so once you build and rebuild your network, that's how you monetize it. And I don't mean just telling people everybody to buy your stuff. It means they're paying attention. Who are they going to forward it to? Um, what else? What 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 could you use and stuff like that? And then finally, my fourth book, The Pitch Queen: A Woman's Journey from Poverty to Purpose and Profit. When I tell you I'm so proud of all my books, but this one especially, because BMW bought the first hundreds of copies of this book. This is my um, part of part inspiration, part action, and part just bring myself of the things I used to be ashamed of. The, the the men that I dated, the situations I found myself in because of low self-esteem, not taking advantage of opportunities, almost drinking myself to death, almost taking my life and all those things that 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 used to hold me. Because you realize as you go up this ladder, people will start to, well, remember that I remember it. So before you run, tell it, let me run, tell it first. I, I, I was there in the story. And I, I mean, in case you forgot. <laughs> I mean, listen, in case you forgot, you know, because the story you're going to tell is not even going to tell the truth about what happened. You know what I mean? And even though I came from the inner city of St. Louis, Missouri, when I understood my purpose as the killer pitch master, a.k.a. the pitch queen, that led to profits. And so I want women especially to know all these per perfect stories you're reading are not true. I'm not afraid to tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. That way, when you launch something, you put something out there and it's not instantly... Um, Low gangbusters, that's norm. That's the normal. That's norm. Mm -hmm. Most of us, I, I don't know too many overnight successes unless you're teenagers. And yeah. then you may not have to sell a foundation to sustain it. Yeah. So these are these are true, these books that I've written. You actually people hear me speaking to them as they're reading it. And I never thought people would want to hear my voice, but they do. They're like, put it in audio form. We want it. So all, these on, all these books are on my website at www.perfectpitchesbyprecious.com or you can go to Amazon, Barnes and Nobles or whatever. But if you want a hand signed copy, come to perfectpitchesbyprecious.com and go on my work with me page and my books are all listed there. You can get them there. And girl, um, you know, we got other things we got popping too, Queen. Come on now. <laughs> well, I'll definitely be getting the last one because when you held that up, I immediately got goosebumps all over me. So I was like, well, okay. I'm uh, supposed to read that. <laughs> you know, people, you know, the attendees at the conference at BMW stood an hour in line for four hours to get this book. We have the videos like they were, they were like, we've never had four plus hours waiting to get your book. I said, well, my friends had come to it. It was so funny because they, they sat down after two hours. I said, I can't do that. I'm going to pretend like I'm a boy bander from the 90s. And this is Tower Records. And everyone's going to get their thing signed because this just shows that I am who I say I am. 
I'm not fluff. Yeah. I love And then, you know, launch a perfect pitch academy and our rainmaking. Like, this is what I do. And you still keep progressing forward. And that's why I'm so thankful to have been here with you today. Yes, I'm extremely thankful as well. So many things just line up with just the path that I've been on and so much confirmation from you. So I definitely appreciate that. Is there anything else that you want to share with our listeners today? Sure. So if you want to get in contact with me, my website is www.perfectpitchesbyprecious.com. On Facebook, I'm at Perfect Pitch P. On Twitter, I'm at Perfect Pitch P. On Instagram, I'm at Perfect Pitches P. And on LinkedIn, I am Precious L. Williams Killer Pitch Master. Mm-hmm. You connect with me, on, connect with me, do not follow me. Connect with me on LinkedIn and say you, you saw me on this show. And we are launching our Perfect Pitch Academy. It's a three-month academy. So you want to learn about packaging, positioning, and pitching yourself to the right network, not the network you see everybody else or the audience you see everybody else doing. Come check out what we're doing at the Perfect Pitch Academy, taught by me for three months. And yeah, we're going to light it up. People have always wanted to know what's it like to really work with me in a small group. Uh, in a very small group and get that individual attention as well as group attention. Baby, I'm going to show you how to plot, twist, flip the script on what you've been thinking a pitch can do, how to really position yourself in front of the right the right audience, and then package yourself up right so as you get good with this audience, other audiences are saying you and bringing you there. So if you want to know how to package, position, and pitch, check out the Perfect Pitch Academy. You can go on my website and check it out or check it out on LinkedIn. Put in your application. Yes, there is an application. <laughs> And I hope to see you in our first cohort. Awesome. I love it. Well, thank you so much for today. It has definitely been a pleasure. I was absolutely looking forward to talking to you. I knew you would have a ton to share. So I'm definitely grateful that our listeners get to experience you as well. Thank you so much, Coin. It's been a pleasure. (laughs) You are very welcome. I'd also like to take a moment to thank our music sponsor, Stephen Lamore Marr, who made the podcast music. So thank you again, Precious. Thank you.